Okay, I have two questions on the spot. The first one is that we have to differentiate cosine x over 1 minus sine x. And then for the second one, we have to take the limit as x approaching pi over 2 plus of cosine x over 1 minus sine x. These two questions are really good for your calculus 1 class. But be sure you notice that they are two very different questions as well. Anyway, as always, please pause the video and try them first. Okay, hopefully you guys all have a chance to try it. And let's just do the first one right here first. This right here is just a differentiation question. We have to take the derivative of a quotient. Therefore, we just have to use the quotient rule, right? So let's get that going. Let me write down the fraction bar and don't forget to square the denominator right away. So I will put down one minus sine x in this pink parentheses and then you raise that to the second power. And then for the top, you are going to write down the bottom function, which is 1 minus sine x. And then you are going to multiply by the derivative of the top. The derivative cosine x is negative sine x. So you multiply by negative sine x. And then to continue, you are going to minus, because we, have to use, we are using the quotient rule right here. We put down the top function, which is cosine x, and then we multiply this by the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of negative sine x is negative cosine x. Right? So you first maintain the negative, and the derivative sine x is cosine x. So that's why we have a negative cosine x right here for the derivative of the bottom. And this is pretty much it for the calculus step. And then the rest is just you have to do the work to simplify this expression a little bit. Well, as we can see, we can just do the multiplication here. So when you do this times that, we get negative sine x. And then when you do this times that, you get a positive sine square x. And then when you multiply this and that, of course, this also turns to positive. And here we have cosine x times cosine x. So we have cosine square x right there. And Notice, here we have the sine square x plus cosine square x. And this right here is, of course, the famous trig identity. All this right here, right, they add up to be a nice one right here. So on the top, in fact, we have 1 minus sine x. And to make this clear, let me just write this down. Once again, it's 1 minus sine x. And then on the bottom, we have parentheses 1 minus sine x to the second power. What can we do? Of course, this right here is <laughs> to the first power. This right here is to the second power. So we can cancel one of it. So we have just this on the bottom, right? So altogether, we have 1 on the top over 1 minus sine x. And this right here is the derivative for that. Now, let's see how we are going to take the limit. First of all, don't forget, you should always try to plug in the number into the x values, right? And you, you plug in the x value into all the x. You see, cosine of pi over 2. Just look at the pi over 2 plus as pi over 2 for now. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0, right? And then sine of pi over 2 is 1. On the bottom, you will get 1 minus 1. So the first step is you actually end up with 0 over 0. So right here, notice that because we have a 0 over 0 situation, we get to use Laplace's rule, right? And to do this, this right here has nothing to do with the quotient rule. What we are going to do is that we will just differentiate the top and then differentiate the bottom, and then take the limit again, right? So let me just write this down again. This is the limit as x approaching pi over 2 plus. And when you differentiate the top, the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. And we also have to differentiate the bottom. So let's put down d dx like this. The derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of negative sine x is negative cosine x right here, right? So this is pretty much uh, what we have after the differentiation, but we are doing the Laplace rule. 
we are not using the quotient rule at all. These two are two very different questions, right? Okay, so from here, of course, negative, negative become positive, so that's positive. And you can also think about this right here. This is sine x over cosine x. Of course, this is just nothing but just tangent, right? So if you would like, you can look at this as the limit as x approaching pi over 2 plus of tangent x. Well, yes, earlier if you put pi over 2 right here, you get a 0 in the denominator. That's no good. But if you look at tangent right here, one of the things you can do is you can just refer to the graph. So I will do that for you guys. This is the graph for tangent. We know tangent has vertical isotopes at pi over 2, also negative pi over 2. So this is the positive version, and this right here is the negative version. And the tangent goes like this. Right? And then just keep repeating the same thing. So the next part, you don't need to worry about this, but you just have to know the graph will go like this. Well, when x is approaching pi over 2 from the right-hand side, you are looking at this x value. When you are going toward the right -hand, from the right-hand side, you see the curve, the y value, is going straight down. So this right here, the answer to that is negative infinity. All right?